Hi, this is Adapter for Best Force Calibration Results of Tension Links, Crane Scales, and Dynamometers. My name is Henry Zumbrun. I'm the president of Morehouse Instrument Company. If you have any questions after this presentation or this video, please feel free to contact us at sales at mhforce.com or on the web at www.mhforce.com. So to start with, uh, we're looking at tension members and adapters, using the proper adapters to calibrate these uh, crane scales, tension links, or dynamometers. And if you have old adapters lying around, sometimes they're from the 70s, 80s, they may not accomplish what you need to. Uh, and depending on the instrument type, errors from using the wrong adapters can range from up to 0.1% on crane scales from misalignment, 2% on tension links for pin sizes, and up to 8% on traction dyna dynamometers from not using uh, the roller type bearings. Older adapters can have issues. The service life of force calibrations adapters depend on several factors, including design, number of load cycles, and magnitude of each load. You know, today we have better material manufacturing and quality control processes that provide more reliable strength values for design engineers than 20 years ago. On here, you can see a bolt. This is a failed bolt. This is a uh, grade eight bolt that failed after about 350,000 load cycles. It's the newer adapters are designed for a life cycle of at least 500,000 load cycles or, you know, approximately 50,000 calibrations and failure at close to 1 million load cycles. You know, now that we have explained some of the safety recommendations, we're going to start to discuss some examples where the proper adapters are going to yield better results for the calibration of these types of instruments. The wrong tension adapters. If any of these uh, look like adapters in your calibration lab, there is a problem. Even straight threaded rod can introduce misalignment issues as they can distort the line of force in non-Morehouse machines. Any machine misalignment of 0.01 degrees can affect reproducibility of some load cells. Even our spherical adapters can only overcome about 0.1 degree of misalignment. And here's some pictures in general of our adapters. There's um, our quick change kit, as we call it. It allows for you to use one set of clevises or one set of tension rods here. And then these adapters uh, can be threaded into load cells, clevises, other instrumentation. But we're going to talk more about clevises and, and how to calibrate tension links. Uh, tension links are typically used for lift tests, towing tension, cable tension, crane scale, hoist scale, and tension testing systems. Calibration should be performed with the same load pins that the end user is using with the device. Here's a picture. Um, of a setup and a question is, do you think the output will vary by using different pin sizes? Now let's think about that and it depends on how this instrument is gauged and how the strain gauges are and, and if things are worn or other things. But let's look at this in, in more detail. So uh, loaded with the proper pin diameter to 50,000 pounds, instrument reads 50,000 pounds. Loaded without the proper pin diameter to 50,000 pounds, instrument reads 49,140 pounds. So roughly an 860 pound difference or a 1.72% error at 50,000 pounds from not using the proper size load pins. It's an outer tolerance versus intolerance. I want to say something about this that, you know, we're looking at this and some may know who the manufacturer of this is, but it doesn't matter. This is something that you can test. And we've tested numerous links in our lab and all of them exhibit the same problem. So. Really, you don't have to take our word for it. You can test it. You can take two different size, slightly different size pins in your laboratory, make sure they're rated for the capacity of the instrument, and test. I would almost guarantee you will see a difference in output. Tension links good measurement practice from the manufacturing. Using correctly sized pins is critical. If links are damaged, highly used, or worn, decrease the time between recalibrations. The same size and style of shackle and pin used during operation should be used for calibration. Maintaining pin orientation is best practice. This is something that we do here. We mark the top and bottom pin because the pins wear. And when they wear, they you're going to get a different output on the pin. Again, this, is, this had a 1.72% error on a device that's rated for 0.1% of full scale. So significant. And if you remember back to the picture I showed earlier, here's the 
here's the quick change uh, threaded adapters, and here's the clevis. These, these can work so this can thread directly into the clevis, or this can thread into an adapter that then threads into an older clevis if you want to adapt to an older clevis. We recommend the newer clevis systems, and we designed them. Our engineer looked through everything so they match the proper pin sizes in the kits. Here's a picture of one of the kits. And I'm pulling up these pages, and if you look, EDX 25 ton versus EDX 20 ton, we look at the difference for pin sizes. The 20 ton takes a 2-inch pin, while the 25 ton takes a 1.97 or 50 millimeter pin. So it's not that intuitive. Um, as I said, we looked everything up for these sets. We have the pin guide on what pin to use. Here's a picture of the sets. Uh, that you have a clevis, various pins, various, you know, bushings. And if we keep looking at this and going on here, you can see, you know, here's for Dylan's, here's for Rice Lakes. And then it says the pin to use. It's all charted out uh, for you. So if you need uh, our basic kit, and you can see the check marks here, the basic kit does a large amount of instrumentation, and then the premium kit tends to catch the rest. And this goes on for, you know, several pages here. Um, so that's it as far as tension links. If you're using a tension link, the recommended practice is to use the right pin size as called out by the manufacturer. Or better practice is to use the actual pin, have the customer send you the pin, but that doesn't always happen. So the, you know, it's it's good, better, best. Best is to use the pin from the manufacturer. Better is to use the Morehouse system with the same size. Uh, again, that does not test for the wear that, you know, the end user may be using on their pin, but it's the next best thing. And if the users are not sending you these, you need to match the appropriate pin size. So this is a very, very good adapter set to ensure you are giving your customer the result that they need. And then we move on to traction dynamometers. Uh, here's pictured a cow machine that's in, in elongated. So we can fit these shackles in. And these shackles have roller bearings. Now we did some tests without the cage roller bearings and we observed an 8% error on the test that we did. Uh, pretty much we're gonna say, pinning it directly and not using that type of um, roller cage bearing, you're gonna have about a 5% error at least. And again, this is something that you can test. And we do have adapters with pressed in cage roller bearings for this specific type of instrument, but recommendation is to use them with the shackles. Then using the right force machine is also key. All force machines should be designed so that they are level, plumb, square, and rigid. This is our new uh, dead weight machine. This is a thousand pound machine. It is designed so the larger weights are on the top because when you apply a weight, it acts like a pendulum and keeping the larger weights on the top limits the swing of the machine. And then we have examples of other force machines. Here's our, you know, 100,000 UCM. And this is this is shown with uh, clevis uh, tension rods and clevis um, adapters with a tension link. Then we have our 10,000 pound bench top, which is shown with a AP dynamometer, an analog dynamometer. And then we have our 2,000 pound Morehouse tensiometer stand. This can be used to calibrate load cells. This can be used to calibrate, you know, 2,000 pounds AP dynamometers, uh, tension links, crane scales can also fit in here. And as well, it goes up to five feet up here. Uh, this bar moves up here so that you can do cable tensiometers with cables up to five feet in length. If you have any questions, please contact us at sales at mhforce.com. Again, that's sales at mhforce.com. Visit us on the web at www.mhforce.com. And we would encourage you to call us at 717-843-0081. Again, that's 717-843-0081. Thank you for your time.